What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're welding this fender, we're planishing out some of these welds. So I just wanted to make a quick video on how to planish some TIG welds after you've already welded on some sheet metal and make it look real nice, almost seamless. So let's get into it right away. As you can see I have a TIG weld running right down this area right here and it's got lumps and, and highs and lows everywhere and I'm trying to get it to look like this right here which is nice and smooth. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark it with a magnum sharpie. So I'm going to mark this area, just a small area because if I try to do this whole thing at once I'd end up just getting frustrated and you know little steps, little steps. So let's go with that right there. Next thing we're going to do is hit it with a file. This is going to show us all our highs and all our lows. Okay, so as you can see, we got some dark areas right here that still have marker on them, and right here, this means that this is low, right? All this seems pretty consistent in all, all this area, and over here, this is kind of showing low, but that's only because we got some high spots on this weld still, little high spots right here. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start hammering with a slapper in these low spots right here. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to bring this low spot up. That looks like a low spot. You could tell with the shine and the light, the light shining down. I can, you know, do a little dance and I could see where the light's shining in it. I could pretty much tell what's high and low, what's low with the reflection of the marker. So let me go ahead and hammer some of these out and we'll file it again and we'll see where our highs and lows are after that. So as I'm doing this, I could see the little marks where I'm hitting with the slapper. I could see them and I'm moving around in those darker areas and it's, it's knocking off just a little bit of that marker and letting me know that I'm stretching those low spots and bringing them up. This takes a little bit of practice, but you know, after a little bit of practice, you really start to, to get the feel of it, especially if you've done the entire fender like I have here. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more marker on it. I could already tell with my marker going back and forth that those lows have come up a lot and the highs have been knocked down. That weld seam is still there though, so now that I'm knocking those lows up, it's pushing that weld up as well. We're going to be able to grind that smoother than we were initially. So, let's do with this again. Okay, as you can see, we're still low right here and right here, but not quite as much as we were a minute ago. We're still low in this area, but I think in order to lift this up, we're going to have to kind of get into over here too. But a little low there, that weld is still kind of high, you can see it going across here. Let me turn, show you maybe a little better on the camera. Okay, much better. So right here is real low, and right here is low, and right here isn't as low as it was a minute ago before we started. Neither is right here. This is a little low, we'll hammer this back up, but in order to get this, this area up, we're gonna have to probably hammer right up in here. That's a little bit low, that'll come out real easy. This one will come out real easy. 
So let's continue hammering that out. Start with right here. Okay, now you, we could still see that weld line, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grind that weld line off real quick. Okay, tried to grind that as smooth as possible without digging in in any areas. That way I don't create any lows that I don't want or thin the metal too much. Go back with my Sharpie again. Hit it with the file. Now you can see that that's a lot smoother. Got a big low spot right here we'll knock out and some little tiny ones. And sometimes if those are being real stubborn, I might have to tap them from the bottom side of the fender. But we might be able to get that out without doing that. Let's go back at it. I'm gonna hit this a little darker with some Sharpies. That way I can make sure I'm hitting in the correct spots. This little area. That spot there. That actually looks pretty good. Give it a file. You can see how all those low spots are now getting filed away because they're level with the rest of the panel. They're starting to be anyway. Okay, that's really close. So now what I like to do is hit it with this shrinking disc. This is from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal. That guy has a bunch of different tools and he's a wealth of knowledge. I'd, I'd recommend if you like this kind of stuff, go watch his videos. He's a really cool guy and he, he just gives so much information away. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to hit this with some magic marker, give it a little bit of lubricant, and then I'm going to just lightly go over this 
let the machine do the work. What this is going to do is this is going to heat up the panel a little bit on the high spots and bring them down. And it's kind of just going to level everything out. If there's any little high spots in here, any little dings, which I really can't fill a whole lot, but it's not perfectly level. It's, it's just going to level all that out. Get it with a spray bottle and some water just to kind of cool that metal off. That feels, I mean, damn near perfect now. I mean, damn near perfect. So now I'm going to hit it with this strip disc just to get all that shininess off of there. You still see a little bit of weld on there. I'm gonna hit it with the I'm gonna hit it with the 80 grit real quick. It's an 80 grit on a roll lock. Now it's on that weld where we were working. Go back to the strip disc. Then I like to hit it with the DA. So now you can see that that weld is basically disappeared and that looks like that looks like there was never a weld there. And that is exactly how you do that by hand without a planishing hammer or without running this through the English wheel. That is how you do it. The entire fender had that on it. And I've been doing this for a few hours now. That's what the fender looks like now after all that work. Looking really good. All right, thanks guys for watching. I hope that you're able to take that information and actually use it. Um, and I hope you got some value out of this video if you did. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.